Good morning. Good morning. It's Monday and we are starting a fresh week. Uh, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. So there are new mercies and new grace for you today and for this week. And uh, whatever you've faced in recent times, yeah, it's a new day and God is with you. We're looking this week at Psalm 121. Psalm 121 is one of the songs of ascent. We preached on it last year at church and we looked at these psalms of um, uh, a pilgrimage as the people went up to Jerusalem to worship at various festivals. They would sing these psalms and um, this is a song of ascent, a psalm of ascent as they ascended to Jerusalem to worship God. And so it's a, it's a, it's a, a psalm for the journey um, for those who are on pilgrimage, for those who are on the road, facing various challenges and troubles. So we'll read it for you and then we'll share some thoughts. Psalm 121, a song of ascents. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. This line, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. If you can imagine the pilgrims walking up to Jerusalem, and looking up to the hills, looking up to the high places. The high places um, at that time would have um, on them um, Asherah poles and other places of idolatry and worship to foreign gods where the people would go up to the high places to worship their gods, to petition their gods and uh, to build their altars and their, uh, and their um, centers of idolatry. and. The psalmist, the, those that are singing this psalm, are looking up to the hills as they pass through, looking up to these high places, these promises of deliverance from various gods. And um, the reflection then is, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Am I going to get help from these things that people rely on? Um, and the answer is, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Um, we get our help from the creator of God, from the maker of heaven and earth. I know there are those that would depend on other gods, depend on, in this age in which we live, depend on uh, other forces of spirituality or, or whatever. But we, we rely on, we depend on, we put our hope in the God who made the mountains, the God who made and created all things. We come to a powerful God. We come to the maker of heaven and earth. That's the one that we turn to for help. That is the one that helps us and turns towards us. And so there's great comfort in that, um, in that we don't, we don't turn to wooden uh, gods. We don't turn to gods of our own making. We don't turn to some sense of vague spirituality. But our help, your help this morning, comes from the one who made all things, who flung the stars into space, who created the heavens, the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, everything that we see. The one who has such creative power is the one that can help you and the one that can help me. The one who has such power at his disposal, the one who can throw these things out of his fingertips, who holds the world in his fingertips, in his fingers. Um, he has the whole world in his hands. Also, it says in the Bible that the earth is God's footstool. Um, it's, it's not a big deal for God, the God who created the universe and the galaxies and all of these things. And yet the intricacies of human beings are an, are an, are an eye or a, the, the complexity of our, of our beings. This is the one that created us. And that's where our help comes from. So as we travel along the road, there are various challenges that would face us, uh, whether it's our foot slipping, whether it's our ankle turning, whether it's um, 
whether it's the uh, the, the the shade uh, um, the, the Lord sun. the sun um, or the moon uh, which which was lunacy uh, which was mental illness um, coming from the word luna um, uh, the, whether it speaks of being moonstruck but whether it's mental anguish whether it's uh, the heat of the day whether it's daily challenges whether it's the challenges of, of a journey of, of turning our ankle whether it's walking our daily walk whatever challenges this this psalm like the other psalm that we read recently um you know no harm will come near you it doesn't it doesn't promise us exemption from troubles uh, as this psalm doesn't either but it does promise us help from god in the midst of those troubles um in the valleys as we look up to the hills as we lift up our eyes to god our help comes from god the maker of heaven and earth so we're not promised on this journey of life. We're not promised exemption from trouble. In fact, Jesus said you will have trouble in this life. But we are promised uh, deliverance and help. And Jenny, this this repetition of whether it's watch over or guard or keep, I think it's eight times. Right? There's the word in Hebrew. Um, I don't know how to say it in Hebrew, but the word for that is translated here um, as keeper or watches over or preserve guardian guardian or even keep um is is the hebrew word f for our word keep to preserve to guard to keep to keep safe um and you know in a, in a biblical text we look for repetition don't we and we see that here he says he watches over you um he watches over israel he watches over you again um he where else was it he will keep you from all harm he will watch over your life we watch over your coming and going um so it's interesting that 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 word um is obviously central to the meaning of this psalm the word to keep to preserve um and i was thinking of things that that you keep that you that you preserve that you keep safe um i've got um several um plastic boxes um under well some are in the loft and some are under my children's beds and they're full of um for you would be tat um it's just old children's drawings and little toddler shoes and their first um report card from school or so it's just things that are precious to me because they're the ki memories that of of my children so that's their kid my kids memory boxes so those are things that i keep that i keep safe that i've put in a special box in a special place um, and God views you and me like that. He, we are precious to him and he keeps us, he protects us. That doesn't mean that um, you know, bad things don't happen in this, in this life. We know that that's not true. Bad things do happen, don't they? Um, but he keeps us in that and he walks with us in that and through that. He watches over us um, and he, he protects us as, as we are um you know walking through life i saw a little um facebook video last week of a toddler um, and and his cat on a balcony in a high rise and the toddler was uh trying to climb up the balcony and the cat was just watching the toddler and every time the toddler would put its hand on the railing the cat would swat its hand away and and follow it around swat it wouldn't wouldn't let the toddler climb up the railing um and the cat was keeping the toddler wasn't he keeping him um, from from being silly and doing something stupid and in the same way God keeps us and watches over us and and is always his eyes are always on us and always um, mindful of us um, I know when my my son is um, our son is in at university in, in London oh well, he's back home now but normally and when he's there he he isn't thinking of us is he he's living his best life he's studying and seeing his friends and doing his thing and uh, enjoying independence but he is always on our minds isn't he he's always in the back of our mind or in the forefront even and he's he's always you know he's always we're we're he's we're always aware of him he's always present in our thoughts and in the same way you know even when we're not mindful of god or we even sometimes feel forsaken by god um, he, you and me, we are always present in his thoughts and he is always keeping, keeping us in, under the shelter of his wings, even when it doesn't always feel like that. Yeah, so eight times guardian, eight times watches over, watches over, keeps, preserves, 
protects. That's the God that we come to, the God who helps us. So as we start out this week, uh, why not turn to God for help uh, and think of this psalm, I'm going to lift up my eyes to the heavens, to the hills, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Those are his qualifications for his power and his help. And in the midst of the valley, in the midst of turning an ankle or being moonstruck or sunstruck, in God will guard us and preserve us and protect us and watch over us. As Eugene Peterson writes, the promise of this psalm, and both Hebrews and Christians have always read it this way, is not that we shall never stub our toes, but that no injury, no illness, no accident, no distress will have evil power over us. That is, will be able to separate us from God's purposes in us. So maybe Jenny, you'll pray for us. Father, we thank you um, that your eye is always on us. We thank you that you are guarding, preserving, keeping us, watching over us. We thank you um, that your plans for us will come to pass. And, and none other. And I just pray that this, as we enter this week, that we would be mindful of that, mindful of your steadfast love, which never ceases, of your mercies, which are new every morning. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a great Monday, and we'll see you tomorrow as we continue in Psalm 121. God bless you.